you for being ready. May I present you with the clicker? The that advances. Oh, that advances. And your microphone. Hi, I'm Ariani Ong. I'm a community advocate from Rockville, Maryland in Montgomery County. And uh, I was invited here as an individual. Um, CLUSA has a interest in Maryland and Montgomery County, and currently there isn't a partner there. So I will be speaking, I was invited to speak about my activities. And so what I thought I would do was to talk about the progress and challenges, specifically within um, Montgomery County with respect to um, building political empowerment. So the indicators that I wanna use in order to evaluate political clout are the following, and that is the voters, whether we have a critical mass and turnout, um, the number of candidates, very importantly, the number of leaders and influencers um, that are present, uh, organizations that provide endorsements, um, a fundraising activities, and also a visible community. So Asian American voters, the narrative currently about Asian American voters in Montgomery County specifically is that we don't vote. I've heard this directly from um, candidates the candidates who've been running for county council and so have other people. Um, there is no state data. I'm hoping API Vote will have a state fact sheet on Maryland soon, Christine. Um, and Lily Chi, who ran as and won a seat in the state delegate, has started to collect data for District 15. But as you all who campaign know, um, the van data, you have to just pull voter information and guess as to their ethnicity. So it's very incomplete. Um, if CLUSA wants to start a project, starting with Montgomery County would be advisable. Why? Because half of the Asian American po uh, population in the state resides in Montgomery County. There's 136,943 um, persons, Asian Americans, who live in that county. And that's also where I live. Yes. Uh, so it was nearly 400, oh, 300,000. It's roughly 300, at the very top. Oh, in Montgomery County. Oh, I see. Uh, thank you, thank you. And, and we also boost the, the top four most diverse cities in the United States, just to give you an idea of our demographics. Um, we have 40% of the state's immigrants in Montgomery County. Uh, so in terms of uh, those who are eligible to vote in Montgomery County, those who are citizens and over the age of 18, we comprise about 4.7% um, in the state, and that's 198,135. Okay. Um, in terms of elected officials and candidates, we have a pretty high representation um, and in the state legislature. Uh, before it was eight, and now after th this most recent election, it's 10. So if I understand correctly, that might actually be larger than California. Anyone can help support me with that fact or not. Um, more modest representation at the county and local level. Uh, candidate training is pretty ample, but what we really need is uh, there was a, a gentleman who taught Opley. We need one of those organizations in Maryland, someone to really cultivate um, candidates. To be a candidate, you have to have the willingness, you have to have deep knowledge and involvement with your community, not only the Asian American community, but really the mainstream community. And what's happening is that people may have one or two, but not all three. So. I'll give Lily Chi as an example. She was the right-hand person of um, the county executive in the county, nearly a 10-year political career in the county government. Um, she was plugged into uh, the, the power broker network, which is about around 2,000. Um, but she also was very involved in the Chinese American community. And because she had that marriage, that made her a good candidate. Whereas, oh, I only have 30 seconds. Okay, I need to move on. Um, whereas other candidates, it might take them up to 10 years to get to that position again. So we, we need an effort to mentor and support political candidates, and then we also need a political infrastructure. 
Um, the, the beginnings of such an effort is starting to happen. This past summer, there were a number of Chinese American organizations that hosted for the first time a candidate forum, and they invited all the Chinese American candidates in the state. <laughs> so that was, there's five. So there's, they run from Board of Education and City Council to um, the state legislature. Um, leaders and influencers, very important. I would say even more important than the political groups. Um, the reason why is because they are the, the, the movers and shakers are active in multiple political groups, and so uh, they hold a lot of power. Yet, we have yet to build, again, a pipeline of new leaders, and that's very important. Uh, just to give you a sense of the political leadership across government, uh, the numbers of officials, uh, they're, they're still modest at the local level. What happened at the county council level is that there were 33 candidates running for four seats. And we had four Asian American candidates. Um, we may have had a good chance, but for the fact there were so many candidates in the field. This is more about our political leadership. Uh, new emerging leaders, some efforts among like the education groups to involve youth in the political process. So for example, when we had um, this candidate forum, they invited two youth to be co-moderators. Endorsements are an emblem of political clout. I think only one to two offers endorsements. Fundraising, they're done um, mainly by individuals, but we all have the same networking list, so that has a limited effect. Uh, visible community, it's increasing. There are a lot of people who have been um, volunteering in campaigns for the first time due to some of the candidates that I mentioned, um, but there could be more. This is very important. I wanted to add leadership right here. So at the heart of what we need are leaders and data, and that will uh, help support all the other elements that I think that would help support a uh, political presence in Maryland. And that, I will wrap that up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ariane. And in fact, she's not coming in individual.